That makes sense, but if I wanted the Japanese sit to show up there, it's just, you know, just, well, frankly, impossible. Or if I wanted to, if I wanted to use the browser, if I wanted to use any of the, the controls that are available from, from um, Silverlight. So the, the Silverlight and XNA integration enables you to do two main things. One is you can, in this case, you can overlay Silverlight and XNA, so you can use the, the best of both worlds, really, from that perspective. Um, but you can also build it such that you can keep your XNA application. So think about if you're writing a, if you're writing a game, is that when you're actually playing the game, you probably don't want Silverlight to pop in. You, you, know, you want your, your, your game to be shown through. But if you're writing a high score table or a menu, do you really want to do that in XNA? Probably not. So you can, you can have you know, one page in Silverlight and then just switch to XNA for, and switch back and forth from, from that perspective. Um, so you know, that's, that's pretty cool, so, uh, but I can go for a free spin here. If I get a free spin, then um, I'm actually capturing this and it's like, well, okay, so what, why is this a big deal? Well, the, the gesture um, capture here is all done in Silverlight and passing directly through to XNA. So you see from a performance perspective, the, you know, the, there's a slight performance here if, you, if I was going to do this in XNA, uh, direct XNA. But it's so much easier to do in Silverlight to be able to deal with that. So I can click back. Well, then if I, you know, if I want to go edit this guy, so uh, let's see. I want to click on animation. Again, I can use all the controls that are available to Silverlight and just overlay them. So, you know, I really, you know, that tank hat animation is pretty boring. You know, I don't want that, but if I want my wheels to go, so. Um, the key thing here is that you, you develop the Silverlight and you can easily just move across in, into XNA. Now, I'm not going to lie, building this tank is not particularly easy. Uh, you know, it still requires some 3D, so, um, you know, to give you some kind of idea, it's like, I well, I don't want the texture and I want a wireframe. Um, so, you know, there, there is, you know, you still have to be pretty decent at understanding what it takes to, to do 3D to be able to do that. but. You can now build the two applications together and really, really take advantage of the, of the two, and start building applications that you know you don't have to. You're not limited by what we decided was the particular framework you have to go go use. Um, so uh, one of the examples I use is an iPhone application, which is the Ocarina application, which is this kind of flute that you can you can blow on. And it's great. You can imagine you imagine devs are like, oh well, I can blow on the microphone and play a flute. That, that's cool. And then you can really imagine like the last week, it's like, well, wouldn't it be great if you could hear all those guys around the world and like they have to put a 3D globe in that and then you can hear all these people playing? Those are the types of things that we're, we're hoping and, and seeing already in terms of people building applications that we frankly never even imagined would, would come on, um, on a phone.